So what the title of this presentation is, uh, and the purpose of this presentation is to present uh, an experience in the use of the semantic uh, media wiki in, in the case of a software engineering company uh, that is called GMB. And, and well, we, we develop a project that I think that is, is, is interesting. It's not quite complex from the technical point of view, but I think it's very useful and, and I think that uh, after seeing all the previous presentations and, and all the technical improvements that have been made in the in the semantic media wiki, I think that uh, it's open to many possibilities to 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 improve also our our work. So we go ahead and what is the the main purpose of the of the of this activity and in companies who are making software development for for critical sectors like aerospace automotive or medical systems for example the people developing the software they have to pay a special attention to the process requirements and as, as we know uh, whenever we have to develop a, a software solution, we have to implement a set of functional or non-functional requirements that are related to what the product has to do. But in addition, um, we have to follow a specific requirements that tell us how we have to do the things. What kind of intermediate web products uh, must be created what kind of characteristics these work products uh, have to um, um, present, etc. So the process requirements are very important, especially when we have to develop something, as we said, for this kind of uh, critical uh, applications. Here you have a description, a definition, sorry, of the process requirements from an IEEE document. Uh, those that don't directly address the end item system but rather how the end system will be developed and provided. So for example, when, when they tell us that we have to use a specific design method, uh, or we have to achieve some kind of metrics, etc. In these cases, we're not talking about what the product has to do, but how we must develop the, the, the software. And at the end, this is a uh, mm, this kind of requirements. They are adding more complexity to the to the activities because the software developers they need to deal with the domain knowledge about the the what the, the software has to do, but they also have to know these guidelines of requirements on how to complete the different activities, and and also uh, important what kind of information they have to include in the different work products that they have to produce. Requirements, design, uh, verification, uh, records, uh, whatever. And the situation is ever more complex because these process requirements, typically they are not coming from a single source. So the developers, uh, they have to know the requirements coming from the corporate internal procedures but uh, typically they have to know also the requirements coming from industry specific standards or uh, typically uh, requirements uh, that are provided by the customer so the 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 key point is that uh, in the case of the process requirements we need to deal with too many requirements coming from different sources and that they are stated in different documents. This is just an example in the, the Galileo program. Uh, you know that this is the satellite constellation for, for positioning. Uh, in, in a project for Galileo, we need to use and we need to follow requirements coming from different documents. The Galileo software standard, Galileo management requirements, uh, Galileo requirements for configuration and data management, and requirements for assurance and safety requirements, system verification requirements, etc. So this is this is the problem that the, the problem is that typically it might be easy to miss uh, one requirement that it has an impact on the activity of the work product that you have to 
that you are doing or that you are generating, but these requirements are spread into different documents and, and people can uh, can miss any, any information that might be relevant. So this is an information overload problem. Uh, inadequate access to information may have and typically has a negative impact on productivity. People can make mistakes uh, due to missing information. Uh, when we have to make an estimation, for example, of the four to do a task, if we don't know all the requirements and all the guidelines that we have to follow when doing this task, this might lead to erroneous assessments and estimations of the work to do. And, and of course, it, it's very important that uh, if we don't do uh, something at the time we have to do it, uh, the reliability of the implementation can be compromised, okay? Because uh, when developing software, we cannot go back and recover things that we didn't do uh, at the time they have to be to be made. So, um, basically, how can we ensure that all the staff working in the project is aware and knows all the applicable requirements coming from all these different sources? How can we ensure that all the work products that are going to be generated, the final and the intermediate, are going to meet the constraints that they have to follow? And typically, uh, you know that in most of the companies, they try to, or they have some kind of process descriptions, uh, maybe in documents, in Word, PDF documents, maybe in, in, in intranets, in web pages, but, um, the static publication of this process information typically is not enough. And because in addition, uh, the teams may benefit of the use of platforms that support and, and give us collaboration opportunities. We will talk about that in later. So what is the solution that we propose? Basically, the important point is to be able of managing the context and, and all the contextual information that is needed to do the work. And for example, uh, what are the tasks that I have to do? What are the inputs that I need to do the task? What are the outputs that I have to generate? What are the characteristics of these outputs? What are the rules that I have to follow when I'm doing a specific task? So all these kind of things is what we call the context that people making software development or software testing, whatever, they have to know. And, and it's very important to put all the information in the context of the activity or task that they have to, to, to do. So the idea is to have a, a single point of access uh, where the people can find the description of the software process with the tailoring or the adaptation to the corporate guidelines and the requirements coming from the external sources. And, and well, more or less, this is uh, what we have said before, okay, to avoid this problem of having all these requirements spread across different documents and, and the risk of missing any relevant information. And these are the set of, re of requirements that, uh, that we established. The single point of access, put the requirements in context, support the definition of corporate process and the mapping of the process requirements to the uh, process descriptions, the tasks, the activities, etc. Uh, it's very important to give people the capability of making some kind of collaboration around the information that we have uh, via annotations. Uh, for example, um, you know that some requirements uh, might be subject of interpretation, okay? This should not happen, but, but it happens. And then, for example, if one requirement has been interpreted in one project in one way, and, and it has been accepted, or if the evidences that we have provided have been considered good enough, this kind of experience, it is very important to record this experience because it can be reduced by, by other projects. So this kind of collaboration, this is my understanding of the requirement, but what do you think? Well, in, a, in another project, uh, we understood that this referred to that, and we provide this evidence and it was accepted. So we need to collect this information and we need to collaborate around the requirements and around the activities and the task. <coughs> and something that is very important is that uh, all the people must have uh, an easy access 
to all this information. It's very important to avoid complex learning curves. And, and it's also important to support other queries uh, to in order to collect the information from the from the uh, from the data repository. And here is where a semantic media wiki uh, comes because uh, it's a suitable platform to ensure the consistency of all the data and to support this collaboration. Uh, we can create and we can manage some kind of knowledge representation structures via the properties, uh, categories, etc. Uh, it's possible to make ingestion of the process requirements and the process requirements encoded in, um, in, in, in XML uh, documentation or files. We can collect the contribution of different users via annotations, for example, that can be attached to any of the items that are being managed. And uh, as we said before, is easy to use for the people. And, and in fact, in, in this company, uh, there is a wide experience in the use of, of Wiki. So this is an example of all the Wikis that, that uh, we have okay, in, in the company to manage information about programs, about uh, practices, uh, whatever. So we have this experience and the people were used to uh, work with um, with with wikis and in the particular case of this wiki focus on process requirements uh, what is the content the information that we have to provide basically we must have the visual representation of the software process in other words the typical diagrams that are used to represent the the process in this case the process model that we selected uh, is an ISO standard uh, 29,000 100 uh, using a modeling language that is called SPEM. Uh, SPEM is Software Process uh, Engineering Modeling or something like that. And, and well, might be is not as mm, known as, for example, the BPMN or other the modeling language, but in the case of, of um, software engineering, uh, we think it's a good alternative. And this process description was generated with a tool that is not related to Wiki, is the Eclipse process framework. But well, once we have the process descriptions, uh, this information can be incorporated into the Wiki. Uh, just one comment, for example, with the Eclipse process framework, it's possible to generate this kind of publications, okay, like the one that we can see in, in this screenshot. And um, what happens? This is something static. So yes, you have a nice publication with the diagrams, with the description of the tasks, etc., the roles, the work products. But this is something that you cannot link, for example, with external requirements. So if you have to follow um, a new standard, you cannot incorporate information in this kind of publication because this is something totally static. It's pure HTML. Uh, if you need to collaborate or to collect the feedback from the users about one task or whatever, you cannot do that because this is totally static. Okay, so I, I think that this is useful to see what are the benefits that we can obtain uh, when moving to uh, semantic media wiki. More or less, this is the mm, the model, uh, basically the list of properties and the list of entities that we consider in, in the approach. We need to deal with process, with activities and tasks, with work products, with uh, standards that are the documents providing the list of process requirements. Of course, we need to then deal with the process requirements and milestones that will typically is something that uh, in all the software development standards, they are linking uh, the requirements to dedicated uh, milestones. These are some of the properties. At the end, we need to create the relationships between requirements and the standards, the requirements and the task, requirements and work products, process and activities. Uh, for example, the, critical, the criticality of the different requirements, uh, whatever. So more or less, this is the uh, basic model uh, that we follow to, to describe the, the different entities. <clears throat> then, in order to build the, the solution, uh, we follow basically three steps. 
Uh, first of all, we create the process model using the tool, the Eclipse Process Framework. And, and once we create the model, this model can be exported into XML. And uh, from XML, uh, we can generate uh, through different transformations uh, the input that is needed for the uh, for the wiki, okay, for the semantic media wiki. Uh, there were also, of course, the graphical representations of the process. In this case, I, I, I remember that some kind of manual work has to be made to incorporate this information. In the second step, this is where uh, we incorporated the process requirements into the uh, into the wiki. Okay, so more or less the, the process is similar. Uh, we took the requirements and we convert the, the information about the requirements into one format that is suitable for the incorporation or the import into the um, into the wiki. Here, uh, it's very important to make the mapping between the requirements and the task and the activities that they are related to. For example, if you have a requirement telling that you have to achieve uh, a specific coverage for um, when you are doing the testing, this requirement has to be attached or linked to the task that refers to the testing activity. Okay, so in this case, of course, it's necessary to make some kind of intellectual mapping between the requirements and the and the activities and the task in the process model that we selected. But well, it's something that we uh, we, we have to do. Okay, uh, maybe in, in uh, using some kind of language interpretation techniques or something like that. It could be made in an automatic way, but well, at the end, you have to check that the allocation of the requirements to the task is 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 correct. Okay, and finally, uh, using this mapping between the requirements and the task, we incorporated uh, inline queries uh, just to display uh, in the pages for the task to display all the requirements that are related to the task and in the pages uh, for the work products to display the requirements that have an impact on, on that work product. I think that this is also very, very important because it's something very simple, but it gives us the capability of um, having a dynamic view of the information. So we have to incorporate a new standard or a new requirement, then I only need to make the mapping uh, in the requirement um, properties and then automatically this requirement is going to be shown in all the places in all the context where it is needed uh, of course it's also possible to to use these inline queries to to deal with the um, specialization of uh, for example of documents so there are different type of uh, test reports uh, so, what are the requirements that affect all of them, or only some of them, etc.? And well, finally, here you have some screenshots about the. This is the general description of the process. This is the description of a specific activity, with information about the input products, the outputs, the participants, whatever. And this is important. This is the list of all the process requirements coming from different sources. For example, for the, from the quality management system of the company, from the ECSS standards to different standards. And the point is that for all the requirements, we have like a dedicated page with all the properties that, that uh, are used are, and are useful to, to classify this standard and the link to the activities and to the task. So more or less, I think that the, the, the solution is uh, it's something technically speaking is not complex, but as I said, it's, it's very useful because it uh, gives us the capability of ensuring all the consistency between the process description, activities, task, and the process requirements. Uh, we are giving the people developing software a tool where they can find all the requirements and all the constraints that they have to follow when they have to do a specific task and this is very important the the idea of the single point of access in the case of new standards coming or or new mm, process requirements it's very easy to incorporate them into the into the content of the of the wiki 
and uh, as we said, the the collaboration um, possibilities that we have with the with the wikis is something that uh, um, gives um, up too many opportunities. Okay, to share the information about how to interpret and how to deal with uh, with the requirements, uh, to collect evidences from different projects, uh, etc. So the, the experience is, is very positive. And honestly, I think that uh, Semantic Media Wiki is a tool that uh, it can be uh, used in this kind of context, in, in engineering activities, in software development activities, and it can provide too many benefits for, to, to, the, uh, to the companies. I think that's all. I think that more or less I was in time. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yes, and I, I, I agree with you, and, and I have I have been uh, attending and listening to, to the previous presentation from other colleagues, uh, not only today, but also uh, yesterday. And yes, uh, there are two, as I said at the beginning, there are too many improvements in, in the tools that you are discussing. And, and because this was made with the with the standard functionality of, of the Semantic Media Wiki, but uh, with all these all the plugins and all the things that you have uh, that our colleagues have uh, described, I think that we can we can also get too many benefits and, and, and to improve a lot the approach. I hope. Thank you. <laughs>